Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi, welcome back to another part of Project Irrationality. I know a lot of people of you were probably waiting for the third part of the scanning electron microscope video series of 40 nanometer versus 7 nanometer, but I'm still waiting for some statements from Intel and also AMD, and I think it will be just fair to make sure that this video is clean and everything is fine and fair therefore I give them a little bit more time and in the meantime we're taking a look at project irrationality after six months we kind of ended the project but also not really I also wanted to do a follow-up video for I don't know how many months just didn't have the time to squeeze it in between that's why we're doing this right now we will just take some benchmarks um, you can see Cinemage R20 single threaded test is still running in the background we will do some crystal disk marks see what the rate array is performing and also in the end to do some maintenance of the water loop itself it has been sitting in there for like half a year I'm using it daily like for I don't know like 10 hours a day and yeah I'm just curious how the structures look like like the GPU water block if we have some residues in there therefore second part of the video going to replace the water with some fresh fluid First of all, what am I running right now? I'm running the 3975X CPU at 4.4 GHz across all the 28 cores, which you can see right here at a core voltage of 1.24 volt. Definitely not the best CPU I've ever seen of those samples, but fine for what I'm doing. And memory is running 3466 MHz at C16 and running 96 gigabyte of capacity and that's totally, totally suitable for what I'm using right now and also still using the Dominus Extreme. You just saw in CPU-C that I'm running 4.4 gigahertz across all the 28 cores. The reason for that is that this CPU is not the best sample. I've seen 3175X CPUs which were running much better like 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz at this voltage. I'm running 1.24 volt, which is already quite a lot for those CPUs because it's a high core count, 28 cores, and therefore it's consuming a lot of power. And the highest I can do is 4.6 gigahertz on the CPU, but therefore I need like 1.28, 1.29 volt, and then it's consuming even more and it's getting extremely hot. And in summer, I decided to just go down to like 4.4 gigahertz, 1.24 volt, which was better. It's a little less warm in my room and the CPU can stay a little bit colder. Talking about performance and especially Adobe Premiere, because that's the tool we're using for our video editing. And I know a lot of people will say, why don't you just move over to DaVinci Resolve? I mean, I didn't learn how to cut videos professionally. I just learned it by doing it myself. And then I taught Mary how to do it. And now she also knows how to cut the videos in Adobe Premiere. And then just switching the tool and learning everything all over again, just because we get a little bit more performance out of this. Yeah, that's probably not the right choice for us. Therefore, we just picked the hardware according to our software and Adobe Premiere stops scaling somewhere between 24 and like 26 cores. Therefore, the 3960X AMD Threadripper is probably the sweet spot what you should buy for this software because it has 24 cores and it's a little bit cheaper compared to this platform. This platform was so extremely expensive and therefore, I mean, the name was Project Irrationality for a reason and the 3960X obviously would have been the better choice price performance wise but we can overclock the 3175X much higher. Let's take a look at this chart. The 3175X at stock takes about 8 minutes rendering time for a 4K video in Adobe Premiere and the 3960X 24 core AMD Threadripper, 4 cores less but much more modern architecture takes 3 seconds less. If we overclock the 3960X to 4.3 GHz we can shave off about 20 seconds but the 3175X allows a much higher overclock of up to 4.6 GHz and then we are at about 7 minutes total and therefore the 3175X for me personally was the right choice performance wise didn't really make much sense from the cost perspective because the CPU and the platform itself was extremely expensive and then looking back how the third is performing I would not recommend anyone buying this platform like if you're looking for a very high performance in Adobe Premiere 3960X is probably a sweet spot 3990X will not help you because Adobe Premiere will not scale with 64 cores 
On the top left, you can see that I already passed Cinebench R20. Single is about 450 points, which is not great. That's like a yeah, slow 3600 Ryzen CPU. Multi is a lot faster. It's almost 1500 points. If you overclock it to like 4.6, then you can get to the 1500 mark, which is quite impressive. Temperature wise, it's not that great if you run twin if you run Cinebench R20, especially because of the AVX, but you can also see there's a delta of about 20 degrees Celsius within the cores. Core 0, yeah, 77 and core 17 is 100 degrees Celsius. So there's definitely a delta between those cores, but I'm not running Cinebench R20 on a daily basis. This is just for now for fun. And about 14,600. Previously it was 14700 and just for comparison a 3960X stock has about 1300 points and with OC you can get it just above 1400, maybe 1450. You will probably remember that I decided to go for two Samsung SSDs with 7 terabyte each capacity and they were using U.2 as connection to the main board, which is something that is quite rare in the consumer world, but more uh, often used in the server world. I decided to go for those SSDs because they were fairly cheap for the capacity back then. It was like over a year ago. Now SSD prices dropped much more, but I'm still quite happy with the choice. They're fast, they're reliable and um, with U.2, yeah, quite happy with the speed. You will probably also remember that we decided to make our own SSD cooler. We attached both of those SSDs to a passive heatsink and I think it will be interesting to check speed and also temperature. Running Crystal Disk Mic right now to check the speed of our RAID array. You can see also it's used with half of the capacity, half of the capacity is in use, about 3.5 terabyte of the 7 terabyte speed almost 1300 megabyte per second read and should be quite similar in write. Those are the values we just had in German video. Looking at the temperatures, this also looks great. I just performed multiple sequential read write tests and those are usually quite heavy for the SSDs. If you do that with especially generation 4 NVMe drives, then you can see a significant increase in temperature, but this is very stable temperature wise moves by like, I don't know, one or two degrees Celsius, therefore means that our cooling solution is pretty much perfect. See, even if we repeat the test, it just moves by one or two degrees Celsius. And speed-wise, the 1.3 gigabyte per second is absolutely suitable for what we are doing. Just moving over some video files and editing in Adobe Premiere, that's absolutely perfect. I don't need like four gigabyte per second, that's not going to speed up any of our processes, therefore that's absolutely fine. Just to recap the SSD part, because a lot of other YouTubers also especially ask me this question, is it worth it investing in like very expensive and very fast SSDs? Usually not. If we're producing YouTube videos and we have like, I don't know, like 30 raw files, you import them into Adobe Premiere and they initially, and they're initially processed and this might take 20 seconds. And if you have a very, very fast SSD, it might take 18 seconds, but it's not going to speed up your cutting process and it's also not going to speed up your rendering process. And therefore, it doesn't matter, even if you just use an old SATA drive, the speed is usually enough. It's just this very specific part in the beginning where you're importing the video files, which could be sped up, but then everything else is not going to help. Therefore, I don't see why I should invest a lot of money in like generation four NVMe drives, for example. But now it's time to disassemble this thing. We have to move it over to the other table. It's extremely heavy. And then, yeah, remove the old water, fill it with new water. Project Irrationality now on my table and we have a lot of dirt on the glass and you can see all those paw residues from Sheik because she's always using Project Irrationality as a ladder to get up to her climbing area. So definitely have to clean the window afterwards. I always tell everyone to clean their PCs regularly and that's why we're doing this. I mean, look at this after, that is just six months and I have half of Chic stuck to my finger. Up and downs of an OLED display. Well, I can at least always tell what my average CPU temperature must have been. Something between, I don't know, 40, 45, 48 degrees Celsius. There is some serious burn in, in this OLED display. I can tell what kind of CPU temperature I had in average.
System is cleaned, you can see we drained the loop and it looks better than I expected. The glass tubes are, they look like brand new and that is probably the best aspect about, so, about those glass tubes. There is just nothing left in there, zero residues, absolutely perfect. There are some residues in some corners of the distro plate, but besides that it's much better than I expected. I mean, there is so much hassle usually with the pastel fluid and so many other YouTubers had negative experiences with those pastel fluids. But in my case, except for the residues we have in like the very deep corners of the distro plate, there is nothing in the structure of the GPU block and that is a very good sign. I think I will just leave it the way it is because I was thinking of running some clear water through it or just some special cleanant to yeah, really clean the loop. But considering that we're going to use the same fluid again, well, not the same fluid, but the same type, the same type of fluid. Therefore, I think we can just save the work. We don't have to clean the loop because I cannot see any residues anywhere except for some parts of the distal blade, but that's okay. Therefore, going to refill the loop and then should be good. Thanks for tuning in for this new part of Project Irrationality. It was probably not the last part because, I mean, my irrationality will never end and therefore, I mean, 3090 is out and I'm not sure if Nvidia will bring a Titan successor. We will see. I mean, they said they won't, but you never know. I mean, they always had some weird cards coming out several months after launch, therefore. As a result, I will wait a few weeks after launch and then we will see how things turn out and then we will probably upgrade this machine to a new GPU. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.